Hello, Musto0063 back for part 6, what I hope is the final part of Mega Man Day in the Limelight. Last time I completed stages 3 and 4 of Wily's Fortress, playing as Alec and Guts. That full stage being particularly annoying, long and tedious, riding on the Guts Dozer, but oh well, that's out of the way. On to stage 5, two potential Robert Masters to be playing as, and it just so happens that for stage 5 we get to play as Bomb. So, in terms of style, stage 5 of this game looks very similar to stage 4 of the original game. The reason that we're kind of now one ahead of where we would be in Mega Man 2 is that the last stage that has cleared, so playing as Guts, is nowhere to be seen in the original game. And that's completely understandable. I, at no point in time going through the original would I expect, or indeed do we have, Mega Man riding atop a giant Guts dozer platform, bulldozing his way through the area. So yeah, that's why we are on stage 5 of this game, but it looks uh, very, very similar to stage 4 of the original. A quick reminder on how bomb works, so he fires out bombs, unsurprisingly. They explode on impacts with whatever they hit, um, but you cannot change the trajectory of the bombs. So that means that there's much more emphasis put on positioning Bomb Man well. So, because you cannot change the trajectory of the of the uh, of the bombs. Um, for, in Powered Up, the game that obviously inspired this one, um, you can actually change the trajectory of the of the bombs by holding down a directional button when you fire. Uh, here you do not have that luxury, it, the bomb will just arc in the same direction no matter what you press. Uh, and of course that means that for certain enemies, particularly Mets, it can be rather irritating to hit them, particularly if they're on a level, on a, on a level terrain as you. The reason being that, as you can see, when you shoot a bomb, the arc of, arc of which means that it's likely to go straight over the sodding uh, enemies' heads. This is particularly true for Mets because you generally have to be very, very close to Mets in order for them, you know, to actually spring up with their shield in order for you to attack them in the first place. And by which point in time, trying to hit them with a bomb becomes useless. I hate this screen, so I'm just going to take the one damage there and uh, progress on. The reason being that you tend to get knocked back off of the platforms that you're trying to ride on by the enemies, the, the, those, the things that that enemy uh, spawner spits out. And yeah, I'd rather just take the damage and move on with my merry way rather than mess about trying to be clever and, uh, and, and, uh, and not uh, land on spikes. Um, we have uh, the pleasure of dealing with two sodding giant sniper joes here. And I'm going to muck around and try and get some health here, but uh, yeah, no luck. Oh well. Again, you can see there that the arc of the bomb is kind of such that you have to get really far away from those Sniper Joes in order to be able to hit them. So again, some careful dodging required to actually get through. Okay, so that's the level, and it's probably not one of my favourites, just because it's uh, a little bit tricky to get through. And this is certainly not one of my favourite bosses. This sodding thing is back from the original. Quite a bit different to um, how it worked, I guess, or how the fight kind of went in the uh, in the original. You certainly didn't have these sodding enemies just continually spawning in the destructible blocks. Um, these things that were that we're trying to hit were being hidden behind these destructible blocks in the original, but yeah, we did not have these sodding things repeatedly spawning obstacles in the way. Uh, and uh, yeah. They, can, they just repeatedly spam the things in. They are really freaking frequent, they're really freaking annoying, and actually having enough time uh, to be able to take out these sodding uh, enemies on the, on the wall is a giant pain. Uh, and as you can see, the, the, the lower they get, the harder they are to hit as well. It's because we have to destroy more blocks. Again, the arc of the bomb is kind of annoying in the sense of how we're actually going to get it in the first place. Um, and uh, yeah, a good strategy might be, I suppose, to try and kind of leave blocks um, up and up up in the top, um, such that 
the, 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 the when the things try and blow, uh, you know, throw, throw the block, uh, you know, spam the blocks down that they don't go in the way. But um, yeah, easier said than done. They just keep repeatedly spamming the solid blocks in the way. They can drop them on your head as well, which is also a pain in the neck. Oh, can I take this thing out? Yes! And oh boy, yeah. Particularly when it's right down at the bottom right hand corner. That boss is such a pain in the neck. I hate it. I much prefer the original one. As annoying as the original boss fight was, this one is so annoying just because of the amount of blocks that the stupid things spawn in. Oh, can't believe I did that without actually losing a life. But um, oh well, yay. <laughs> And that brings us to the sixth and what looks like final stage of the game. It's not, <laughs> but it looks like it. And of course we only have one Robert Master left to play as, and that of course will be Fire. And this stage, the background looks very similar, or indeed identical, to the background of the boss rush stage of Mega Man 2. So that will be stage five. We're now in stage six. Um, but thankfully, something a bit different. We don't have a boss rush. We have more of an enemy gauntlet. Um, and it's rather nicely done. So it's kind of split into five parts. Uh, and as you can see here, the enemies in this first part are shooting ice slashes. So the enemies will, will vary their attacks depending on which section of the stage we're in. And clearly here, we're in the ice section. Um, I don't know if the projectiles here actually do more damage to fire. It would be a nice touch, given that f uh, fire is weak to uh, ice, but I um, don't think that actually happens. But um, if you do get hit here, it does, doesn't all feel like that's the case, but um, oh well. Um, it probably takes just a little bit of kind of getting used to in terms of the projectiles of the enemies, although, we're, although the ice slasher is nothing new. You know, having mechs shoot them out is different to what we're used to, so... The projectiles, you know, have a kind of a bit, a bit of a different hitbox than what we're used to for the enemies. So uh, yeah, just need to be a little bit kind of uh, careful as we're kind of uh, going through, the, going kind of going through the stage. Um, but it is kind of a fun one. It's a nice little switch up on, you know, the uh, traditional boss rush. Um, as you can see here, we're clearly now into the second stage. So it's uh, cut. So we're dealing with um, Cutter Joes. Yay! <laughs> Uh, the stages tend to be split by those um, kind of like giant, what look like ice blocks, but I don't think actually kind of technically qualify as ice, they just kind of look rather shiny and whatnot. But once we break through them uh, with Firestorm, that tends to be the signal that we've got, we've got out of one section of the gauntlet and into another. Um, a lot of the enemies in the cut stage, other than these kind of cutting Joes, are the kind of cutters that are just kind of rolling around on tracks. We'll see them come up a little bit, la uh, a little bit later, I think coming up now actually. Um, these tend to be rather predictable, but that's not to say that you can't still, you, you shouldn't still be careful. You want to make all your jumps count, you don't want to get hit by them, they'll hurt like uh, nothing, and nothing else. So, yeah, just kind of um, pay attention to, whoa, that was almost atrocious. <laughs> pay attention to the tracks, I mean, they don't, they don't speed up or slow down as you kind of uh, approach them or anything like that, so they will all move at a constant speed, and that for the most part makes them reasonably easy, easy to predict, but um, yeah, don't take them for granted. Particularly when you're when you're kind of um, com uh, in a confined space and you're kind of combining them with you know having to dodge traditional enemies as well. So here I'm kind of maybe taking things a bit slow than I perhaps need to, but uh, yeah, I'm just kind of trying, definitely trying to save as much health as I can because um, yeah, this screen is rather long and um, not that it's not a good not a good one, a fun one, but um, yeah, your health can get drained like it's nobody's business. So. As much as possible, I would like to take this stage as carefully as I can and avoid taking uh, as much damage as possible. So this bit again, you can see here the cuts on the, the cuts on the on the tracks there. Um, a little bit more kind of um, weird in terms of their patterns. As, as I say, they're not well, not quite as simple patterns to kind of deal with, so you do have to be a little bit more careful there. But um, generally, still not too bad, and um, that's pretty good going so far. Uh, we got through two stages, and I'm pretty happy with how it's all going so far. Um, as you might be already, uh, many of you have seen so far uh, at the moment. We're into the third bit, and we're now in the elect phase. So, um, lots of uh, irritating enemies that shoot out uh, these um, elect shots. And here you can see we have to be very, very careful with the uh, with the elect beams kind of bouncing off certain things and firing. So we have to be very careful here about timing, getting across certain gaps. We do not want to be kind of crossing this gap when uh, the uh, elect beams are going to be coming from. Um, 
are going to be kind of shooting up. So, uh, yeah, something to be wor wary of. Uh, those fan fiends look kind of annoying here, and indeed they are. Um, but do remember that they're now not actually... Um, oh, they're not um, blowing. They're actually just shooting out electricity, so a little bit different. And that's kind of uh, important to note there when you're kind of trying to get past certain platforms. This is just a little timing exercise, not too bad. Whoa. Another timing exercise here. So it's, no, this, is, this is kind of... Um, I don't want to say slow and tedious, it's quite just fun just kind of waiting these things out, but uh, yeah, it's something a little bit different, and uh, yeah, more for that. It's not too tricky either, as you can see. This one, I'm just going to make a run for it, because I don't want to hang about. <laughs> this, well, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get hit here. Yes, I am, but again, I'm just going to try and take out... Okay, no, I'm not. I'm just going to... Oh, I could have just made a run for it before, but oh well. I can sacrifice the extra life and we'll move on. Yeah, well, we can try and move on anyway. That's better, yay. <laughs> yeah, I took a bit more damage in that bit than I really would have liked, but uh, oh well. And now we come on to um, another particularly kind of tricky area. It's the guts bit. And um, mainly again because of how the unpredictability, or at least from my point of view, um, of how projectiles split apart. So um, not only do we have the uh, enemies kind of throwing all these blocks, but um, how the things split apart when they when they you know when they when they hit when they connect with something is a bit tricky. And we've got bloody pippies dropping giant flipping super blocks. Oh boy. This is one thing the screen did not need. Giant flipping pippies. Um, you get you can kind of take them out uh, early before they get to drop anything, but um, yeah you have to be up high enough to be able to do it and uh, you can't always do that. Is actually oh, until this bit going remarkably well. If I could just get to the end of this section as well, then I might get to a checkpoint. But oh, I think I'm probably going to die as soon as I get to the next bit. But if we can get to a checkpoint, that would be wonderful. I will take that. I'm pretty sure. Can we just leg this bit? Yes. Maybe we can't. No. I'm hoping I can clear this bit. No, we're still not at a checkpoint, damn it. I don't think this bit should cause too many problems. I really hope this one doesn't, but you never know. Might do something ridiculously clumsy. Oh, we're still not out. Ow, oh, no, come on, break through the block and get out of here. No! Oh, well, I got to this bit. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy that I died. Um, I was certainly expecting to on this stage to say it is long. It's kind of, why could you not drop something like that last time? Um, it's long, it's... There's lots of enemies, and uh, say apparently not much health line around. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm we're happy to kind of accept dying on this on this stage. Um, oh well, I could have done this last go, and that would have been fine. But uh, there you go. We're out of the guts area, and that brings us to our final area, the bomb area. The main concern with this area is that the enemies tend to explode when you hit them, so you want to get uh, well away from them. Uh, and when you start combining that with um, Gaps, pits, whatnot. Be careful for the. Be careful with the knockback. You do not obviously want to get sent hurtling, or hurtling, but you do not want to get snuck back to the to the left in particular and uh, off a ledge. It's generally, I don't think, too bad of a of a section, but particularly when you're not on the bits where you know where you've got gaps. But um, yeah, again, they seem to be able to they seem to be able to change the trajectory of the bombs. So um, yeah, a little bit unpredictable from that sense, and it would be nice if we could do it, but. Um, Apparently not. As Botman, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 don't want that. This one is particularly annoying, and I'm just going to rush through it, because I do not want to hang around in that area. Oh, come on! Keep jumping up and keep not getting enough height. Ugh. Anyway, that was the final bit. We're through all five stages, and that brings us to the boss. And a reasonably familiar one. And since I managed to get through Bond's, oh, sod it, section reasonably well, I was kind of optimistic that I'd be able to do this bit without needing to, uh, without losing a life as well. But, um, oh well, I kind of screwed up on the first phase of Wily, which was not good. Oh, and those things apparently hit you. I did not know that. Uh, we do get a slightly easier um, second phase than the original. These uh, projectiles are now dodgeable, as opposed to the stupid way they work in the original game, where the hitbox is just such that he shoots out so many and they're unhittable, undodgeable. Oh yay, I touched the bottom of the his capsule, so I'm now in danger of actually losing this. I'm now going to try and spam kill him. 
and thankfully we did it. That was a pretty appalling show on that boss, and I hope to do a lot, a lot better of a job. But hey, only one death on that stage, just by trying to get out of the guts area. Yeah. I think that's possibly the first death of the game, but I'm willing to take that. That stage is long. I wouldn't say it's annoying, it's generally kind of fun, but yeah, there's lots of things to get hit on, and um, yeah, you do well if you can get through that unscathed. Um, that is two stages clear, but we do have one final one to go, and uh, I'm not going to save this for its own part. We are going to take this out, but we are going to complete this, hopefully, now. So we have a secret seventh stage. I say stage, it's more just one giant boss, and we'll see how it's going to work now. So, much like the original version of Stage 6 in Mega Man 2, we have a pretty much a nothing stage with the eerie, eerie no music playing. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just uh, one big boss fight. We start off, as you can clearly see, with Iceman, but there's a nice twist to this boss. Probably to be expected from this game, it probably wouldn't be a true um, final fight without kind of uh, all the Robert Masters teaming up together to, to uh, put a stop to what Dr. Wily. So, yeah, we're going to be playing as all six Robot Masters, and we're gonna, that means we're going to have to be attacking Dr. Wily in different ways depending on which Robot Master we're using. So, for the first um, for the first form, we uh, play as Iceman, and we've got these ice slashes. And uh, the gimmick here, or the idea here, is we want to freeze the fire shots that get sent out of these um, slots. And uh, get up, get up on top of them once they're frozen, and then attack Wily. This second what form works that we have to want to shoot a thunder beam at uh, the bottom platform here. When we do so, the the uh, platform rises up to the top, and it shoots out a fire a fire bullet, and uh, that's how we attack Wily. This one, basically, if you jump over the a, a fire bullet as it's coming out, and then shoot a thunder beam, the timing seems to work out absolutely quite perfect, so that the fire actually hits Wily. So yeah, this bit is quite an easy phase. And that's Electro Man's bit done. Third up, we have Cutman and his rolling cutter. Uh, the idea here being that these these kind of blocks come in from either side of the screen, and what we have to do, whoa, is use that. That was an incredibly lucky hit because I lost track of which side of the things the platform was going to come out of. We used cut, uh, the rolling cutter to split apart the, uh, the little uh, blocks, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, they go up and hopefully hit Dr. Wily. He does on occasion shoot out these um, uh, bombs, which uh, drop down to the floor and. Uh, get rid of the platforms for us, meaning that we can't hit Dr. Wily, so you just have to be careful for those. This bit is really all about just getting uh, a good idea of the positioning that you know, would want to, want to be when you hit uh, the blocks, in order to split them apart such that they hit Dr. Wily. So uh, yeah, reasonably fun fire portion of the fight, that one as well. And here we move on to my least favourite part. I do not like the fireman section. Mainly because the amount of damage that he seems to do to you is sodding massive. Um, the f uh, it's very easy to slip off these um, fire cl uh, sorry, these uh, clouds as well. And uh, yeah, just generally, I do not like this uh, section. Um, you do have to be very wary of uh, the uh, exploding bombs. Sometimes it will kind of go down, depending on why you position, obviously, uh, go down onto the floor, sometimes it will split apart on one of the clouds, and you just need to be kind of uh, very aware of where it is, where, you know, where the bomb is going to split. Um, you also t seem to take an absolutely absurd amount of damage if you land on one of those bloody um, fire or cloud spewers in the first instance, as I just demonstrated. That was so much flipping damage to me. Um, it is nice that, um, I don't think I've mentioned this already, that uh, the um, Robot Master's do not share a health bar, so they each get their own new health bar when they teleport in. Oh, we still got one friggin' hit left! So, if you do happen to take lots of damage in one particular phase, don't worry. Um, you know, next time, or once that rubber master goes away and another one comes in, you will have a full health bar to play as. But, yeah. This is Guts's one. And um, generally, what you're going to want to do here is um, have the blocks come down from the ceiling and so that they land on Dr. Wily. Um, easier said than done. Uh, depends on the kind of uh, the, the uh, wow, the, the timing that you can get it in. It's generally okay, but um, the bombs again that he drops from the from uh, that he drops down to hit, hit you on the floor can be freaking annoying. But oh well, not too bad. Final 
final phase is Bomb Man, and um, yeah, generally okay this one. Just be careful, for goodness sake, not to hit or run into Dr. Wily. I think this thing, from memory, kills you in two hits. It is not something you want to touch. Um, which is really, really kind of cheap difficulty for the last part of this fight as well. Um, just, you know, because you might have done really well during the rest of the fight. Obviously, you've done pretty well if you've got up to this part already. But, uh, yeah, this is a really, really cheap way um, to mess up <laughs> with the two-hit kill. But it's generally quite easy to see how Wiley's pattern works and how he, and how you know how he's going to bounce around. So uh, it's not too bad. So Fireman is the is the phase of that fight that I really don't like. Annoying, we killed Doctor Wiley at that part of the screen, so that he was kind of over the over the pod. But oh well. <laughs> Mega Man came down from the ceiling, all tied up, and we've rescued him. And that is the end of the game. So yay. Um, it's a pretty fun. I thought I'd give my thoughts, obviously, while the while the credits are running. It's a. I still find it's a pretty fun game. I think there are those out there who who kind of bash a little bit on this game, given the ones that have come later, particularly Mega Man Day in the Limelight Two. In my opinion, that is a much much better game than this one. Funnily enough, I think it's pops a little bit harder and a little bit more frustrating at times, even. But the stage design and everything else, the, you know, the, it just kind of works. I think a lot better in Day of the Limelight 2. So uh, hopefully we get to see that pretty soon. As I say, I'm kind of still um, planning that um, my um, Wisdom 2's procedure is potentially might lay me lay my talking a bit uh, low, <laughs> and also don't want to do you know, like I said, the scripts for Mega Man 8 or another kind of I want to be game. So uh, yeah, it's going to be Mega Man Day in the Limelight 2 coming up, and that will be my final Let's Play of the year. So hopefully I can get that done uh, before Christmas occurs. So yeah, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, yeah, stick around for Mega Man Day in the Limelight 2. Hope to have lots of fun with that one. I think it is, for all intents and purposes, or certainly for my, for my purposes, a much better game, and looking forward to tackling that one. So yeah, I will leave it there, and hope to see you next time for Mega Man Day in the Limelight 2. Until then, though, cheerio.